Hello and welcome to the third video uh, in this series for beginners looking at HTML, JavaScript and CSS and making, hopefully, space invaders. So in this video then I'd like to start reacting to key presses. I've cleaned up the code slightly in our main.js so that it's in a fairly standard sort of format how most people write it. It's just with less white spacing than we had before. I'm sure you can see that and I've removed um, console logging and things like that. And what I'd like to do now is re actually react to a key press. And the way we do that is we select our document and there's a function in our document called key down. And key down itself takes a function inside and passes an argument called e or a parameter into this function. And it's in this function, this e, that we can use to actually log whatever key has been pressed. So we're going to say console.log and then e dot which and that will tell us whatever key has been pressed so if I just go to the browser and refresh and now if I press the up arrow you can see I get 38 if I press T or R I get some other values up is 38 left is 37 right is 39 down is 40 and space is 32 and they're the values that we need to be able to react to key presses to move our spaceship in later on in our application now one thing we could do is we could put inside the code here some direct hard coding for the particular number of the key. But I don't think that's a very uh, nice way of do, doing things. I don't like hard coding values and numbers and things in the middle of applications, particularly if they get used more than once or we need to change them later on. It becomes very difficult to find them. So we're going to make a new file in our JavaScript folder called uh, defs.js. And in here we're going to store all of our definitions and settings. The first one we're going to make is called game settings and that's equal to an object and we're also going to make this a constant and an object is something that has it's like a box and it has little boxes inside and each box has a value inside it could be a list of things other objects a number a name a string something like that and it has a key to open its box to access this value so for example in game settings object I could have a key name and I could have the value Fred inside there. I could have another key called age and I could have the value 22. Fred is 22 years old. And now if I log to the console, my actual game settings object, I will see uh, my whole object. I can also, however, uh, log game settings.name and that will then log Fred to the console because I'm saying inside game settings, inside the box with a key for, uh, name, give me what's inside there, it's Fred, and I can do the same with age. So if we go back to the browser and just refresh, you can see that nothing happens, and the reason nothing happens is because I've forgotten to include the file in my index.html, which is always easily done. So I'm going to go down the bottom here, just above main.js, main I'm going to include defs.js because later on main will use stuff in def, so it needs to have already been defined. And then let's go back to the browser and refresh. And now you can see I've got the game settings object. It's called Fred, age 22, name Fred. And here I've printed Fred, and here I've printed the age 22. So objects are really important, and a lot of our application will be based around objects and later on also classes. And whilst it's good to have Fred inside our game settings, it's not actually what we want. What we want inside our game settings is we want another object. And this object will be an object which contains our key presses. And then we'll have a name for each of the key presses and the value that we saw at the start of this video in the console. So again, if I just go back to the browser and see what we've got inside game settings, if I now try and log key press, you can see that we have an object with a key and then the value. So if I use game settings dot key press dot left, it'll be looking for the value 37. So we can use that object then to detect the key presses inside main.js. So going back then into our code, I'm going to take this logging out because it's pretty useless here. I'm going to go back into main.js and I'm going to write a switch statement where I can choose what I want to do depending on the value. So I'm going to write switch and now here the way a switch works is simply uh, for whatever value which is in this case if that value is the same as game game settings.keypress.up 
Then we'll log to the console up. And then we break. We don't want to do anything else inside our switch statement. So if we press up, we'll see logged in the console up. And then we can apply exactly the same logic for all of the other key presses for left, down, right, and space. And then we should see in the console the relevant logging for our particular key press. So I'll just go back into the browser, do a refresh with Control R. And now I press up and I get up, left, right, down, and space. And I can see that I am indeed detecting key presses correctly. Good, so that's it then for this video. Um, we've made a good start. We've got some constants adding in for our game settings and we're able to detect key presses. So any questions or anything unclear, as always, leave a comment um, or a question or anything like that. Otherwise, uh, thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.